In this demonstration, we're going to see how we can model a four-wheel drive vehicle with limited slip differentials using Simscape Driveline. We have a model of a four-wheel drive vehicle. We would like to evaluate the performance of the drivetrain with different types of differentials. In order to test this system, we'll need to vary the surface conditions at each wheel. We will run a transition test where the vehicle starts on ice and then as it moves forward, it moves on to a high friction surface. In this scenario, the center differential will have the largest effect on the drivetrain behavior. We will also run a split test where two of the wheels are on ice and the other two are on a high friction surface. In this test, the front and rear differentials will have the largest effect on the drivetrain performance. We will compare the behavior of the drivetrain with the two different types of differentials using Simscape Driveline. We will see a model of a limited slip differential and we will see how we can vary the coefficient of friction at the wheels based on the vehicle position. And we will see that the limited slip differentials will allow the vehicle to accelerate much faster than the open differentials. Here is our model of the four-wheel drive vehicle. We have the longitudinal vehicle dynamics, tire models, front and rear differential, and the center differential. We can vary the types of differentials using variant subsystems. Let's look at the front differential. We have two different variants. One is an open differential and the other is a torsion differential. The open differential is modeled simply using the differential block from Simscape Driveline. If we enable the torsion variant, we can see how we have assembled this component. It is assembled using the gear blocks in Simscape Driveline. Because the Sun Planet Wern gears are not back drivable, this configuration results in a torsion differential. In the center differential, we have four different variants. The viscous variant is simply a nonlinear damper. The open shaft has no connection to transmit torque. The rigid shaft is used as a torsional spring damper. And the lockup variant, which I will enable, has been assembled from a few Simscape driveline components. A clutch pack will be engaged if the shaft is transmitting torque. To test this system, we will need to vary the road conditions. Looking at the tires, we can see that the coefficient of friction is fed in as a simulink signal. We determine the coefficient of friction based on the position of the vehicle. Our subsystem can test the vehicle under two different road conditions. One is a transition where we go from a low friction surface to a high friction surface and the other is a split where two of the wheels are on a low friction surface and two are on a high friction surface. For our first test, we will use the transition road condition. In the transition road test, the center differential has the largest effect on the behavior of the drivetrain. So we will test all four different center differentials on these road conditions. At the conclusion of these tests, we'll create a MATLAB plot that shows the behavior of the vehicle. Here you can see the MATLAB plot. The open differential had the worst acceleration. It took the longest for it to get off of the ice and onto the high friction surface. The rigid shaft had the best behavior. We can see that the viscous and the lockup differentials were somewhere in between. If we plot the speeds of the tires in the vehicle, we can see how th the system performed. This is for the rigid shaft case, the last one. We can see that all four of the wheels were slipping. As the front wheels reached the high friction surface, the vehicle started to accelerate faster, and we can see that the wheels started to slip less and less. If we were to run the same test with the viscous differential, and replot the speeds of the tires, we could see slightly different behavior, where some of the torque is transmitted to the rear wheels even as it's still on the ice, and it takes a bit longer for the, for the vehicle to accelerate. Now let's do the test with the front and rear differentials. For this, we will switch to the split road condition. We will run this test first with the open differential and then with the torsion differential. When we plot the vehicle speed, we can see that the open differential had worse acceleration than the torsion. In the case of the torsion differential, because it locks up, the vehicle can accelerate because the two wheels that are on the high friction surface are able to move the vehicle forward. In this demonstration, we have seen how we can model open and limited slip differentials and test it on various road conditions.